YouTube. How we doing everybody? Look, we're on a no cooling call here and uh, I haven't been videoing as much because we're actually moving into a new house. We're uh, upgrading because we're in a mobile home right now. We've been in a mobile home for the past two or three years, but we're actually uh, got us a house, a, you know, a house house. So just, I've just had a lot going on. That's why I haven't done live streams. I actually have a little studio on this house for me to do my live streams. But I'm grabbing my tool bag. I'm gonna grab some gauges. And we have a no cooling call here at uh, three mobile homes that I take care of. You can see right there, one, two, three. I take care of all three of these. And uh, we're gonna go see why they don't have any air. And we'll try to take you guys along for that. All right, so we have a Weather King. A three-ton Weather King. It looks like it's from 2020. I can hear the contactor buzzing. It looks like it's... Looks like the condenser coil's a little dirty on that back side. Make sure there's no wasp in here. All right. Let's see if we're getting power. I hope you guys can see what I'm doing. We may not be getting power to that contactor. Let's see. No power. No power from that leg to ground and no power from that leg to ground. So probably have a breaker trip. All right, let me go find it. Hopefully, I hope this thing don't have a dead compressor. I tell you what, let me uh, put the continuity beeper on and see if we get any short to ground. Nothing there. Nothing there. Let's see if we get any ohms to ground, any kind of mega ohms to ground. Nope, open line. Open line, okay, so it doesn't look like anything's grounded. So we'll go to the disconnect first and see if it's got fuses in it. All right, so we had a dead wall nest in the disconnect at the top. There is fuses in here, so we're gonna check these fuses. We're gonna put it on continuity. Some people call that the dummy beeper. You call it whatever you want, but I like the continuity. Okay, let's see if... Good. Both fuses are good. We're gonna check line voltage in the middle there at the top. And as you can see, we have nothing. So we got a trip breaker. Let me uh, see if it's in the house or on the pole. Okay, so we found a trip breaker in the house. And uh, I just wanna make sure that I have line voltage coming to this disconnect now. And we do. 249 volts. So we're going to put this back in and plug this in see if the unit comes on or if it trips it again oh, it came on came right on could be a weak breaker because uh nothing shorted out Might as well go ahead and check the refrigerant pressures while I'm here. All right, so uh, the pressures actually don't look that bad. Oh, I must have lost connection on my, okay, there they are. Uh, got 13 degrees of superheat, but we're running a TXV. 
and uh, on the inside. But it is over 80 degrees in there. Right here, cooling mode, sub cooling. We go to a three ton, that's what we have, all coils. We're, they're calling for, no matter what the temperature is outside, they want 10 to 12 degrees of sub cooling. Um, I could throw a little juice in it and get that sub cooling up, but it is about 80 something degrees in the house. And when it's over 80 degrees in a house, an expansion valve pretty much works like a piston. It's stuck wide open because it's trying to fill the evaporator as much as it can. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let this thing run for about 15 minutes before I decide whether or not I'm going to add charge to it or not. Uh, because a lot of times if you just give these machines time to run and cycle and settle down, your subcooling will come up to where it needs to be. You give that expansion valve time to throttle and adjust, you don't have to add any charge. So we're gonna give it time to do that. See, it's already going up, we're almost at six. So we're gonna give it about 15 minutes and let it throttle and see if we get closer to that 10 mark. See, we're up already up to six. Okay, y'all, she's been running 15 minutes. Subcooling's at seven. I saw it go to 7.2 a minute ago. I'm not gonna mess with the charge. That's subcooling, you have a plus or minus, see, 7.1, 7.2. You have a plus or minus variance of three degrees. That's not enough for me to add charge to this unit. I know once that space cools down, the space is already cooling down. That subcooling is gonna get up to 10 where it's supposed to be. I like the superheat. I like the coil temperature. I like the line temperatures. I like the pressures. I think this machine is running really well. Um, she turned down the breaker issue. She said, if it trips again, then we'll replace the breaker. So, and that's fine with me because whether you, you know, a lot of you might say, oh, you, you know, blah, 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 but I can't change the breaker if the customer won't let me. And honestly, I've seen this happen before and then it never happens again. This could have been a fluke. So, um, I mean, there's no noise coming from the unit. It's very quiet. It's pulling good heat. Obviously, I mean, it's down to 6.5 again, but that expansion valve's gonna play. So we're gonna leave this one alone and call this one a successful fix. Okay, I won't be able to talk, but I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna show you all the temperature split on my thermometers. Hey guys, it's been a while since I've done a video and I'm looking at my cell phone camera and you guys are probably like, damn dude, you've slimmed down. I've, I've slimmed down quite a bit. Uh, what is it, baby? 160? 160 pounds that I've lost. I am in the 200s again for the first time in what, 15 years? My wife's riding with me because I have I have my guys, my two full-time guys. I, I actually hired a second full-time guy. He doesn't have his own truck. He rides with either me or the other guy, depending on what we're doing. And I still have my subcontractor and they're all on a change out. But the subcontractor, he's done. He's done left because he set the gas furnace and evaporator in a closet and new plenum and all new duct work. Um, so, guys, I got a phone call coming in. I got to take it. Okay, guys, sorry about that. But anyway, yeah, the subcontractor's done. He's already set the furnace and the coal in the closet. He's done tied on the new supply plenum, cut all the holes in for the taps or starting collar. He calls them taps. So every time I'm around him, I seem to get in the habit of calling a starting collar a tap even though for 20 years I've always called them a starting collar. Some people call them taps, takeoffs, starting collars. I call them starting collars. 
anyway he's already done he's he the furnace is in place he soldered the coil wired the furnace hooked the gas up he ran all the new ducting my guys are there setting the condenser and the new disconnect new whips because it's got them old whips over here in lafayette that are non-code so anyway my wife likes to ride with me on service calls she doesn't do it every day Think sometimes she's got things to do but she had time today so we did it and uh yeah so a lot of you you know haven't seen me in a while on camera and again i haven't been doing live streams because all my stuff is packed up my microphone my uh, mixing board my monitors and all that are all packed up because we're moving tomorrow to a new house so i'll get i'm gonna get back on top of it but yeah I, i'll probably look pretty pretty slim um so just to give you a little bit of, uh, of about what's going on since I, since it'll be a it's still gonna be a couple weeks before I can do a live stream by the time I get all my stuff set up. So I went from uh, a 4XLT t-shirt to a 2X. This is a 3X. It's too big. I mean, it's way too big. I do fit in the 2X. I mean, it's not horrible, but it's it's too long. Like down here, you know, it's too long. So I do fit in the 2X t-shirt. I went from a 48 slash 50 pants, depending on what brand I wore. I couldn't wear the brands that I wanted to. I'm an old country boy. So I always wore Western clothes like Wranglers or cinches or uh, 20X, you know, mostly cinch and Wrangler. I had to quit wearing Wranglers when I met my wife because she's over here laughing because she hates them. Y'all know the real Wranglers, the cowboy Wranglers with the little brown logo on the pocket on the back. That was my favorite jean, but she hated them. She made me quit wearing them. So I wear cinch now. I can actually fit in cinch. And uh, and I wear Levi. I started wearing Levi's when I got, when I started gaining weight because you can get Levi's in a big size. And I found uh, a particular style of Levi that I really like. They're really comfortable. They're soft, they're stretchy. So, you know, that way in the hot summertime, it's, it's not too bad. But anyway, I went from a 48 slash 50 pants, depending on what it was. I couldn't wear my Western clothes anymore. Now, when we go out, I wear all my Western stuff. You know, I wear my cinch jeans with a nice shirt with my cowboy boots. I'm back wearing my boots. Uh, not that I couldn't wear boots when I was bigger, but they were difficult to pull on because my legs had gotten so big. My legs are so little now, it's unbelievable. But um, so I have, I have work boots, work boots, cowboy boots that I'm wearing right now and then I have go out nice cowboy boots that I'm not allowed to work in uh, I wear cinch jeans and uh, Levi's and I'm in a 38 I wear a 38 uh, cinch and a 38 Levi so I've went down 10 pant sizes you know if you do 2, 4, 6, 8 10 uh, 10, 10 sizes from a 48, 50 to a 38 so 10 to 12 I feel great. I weigh 200 and something pounds. Uh, I haven't weighed in the 200s in about 10 to 12 years, maybe a little more than that. Maybe more like 15 years before. We, yeah, I met my wife 16 years ago and I was like 240 pounds or 230. I haven't, I haven't weighed. I'm not 240, but I'm not too far from it. And I haven't weighed this this weight since about 15 years ago when I was 20, no, no, 18, 19, 20 years old. I probably stayed on that weight till I was about, when I turned 21, 22, that's when I really started putting on weight. So the last time I weighed this weight, I was probably about, 19, I was probably about 20, 21 years old. I feel great. I'm moving around better. It's just, everything's just been 100% better. So anyway... I'm blabbering and I got another phone call coming in. So I'm going to end this video with that. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you guys soon. As soon as I get everything set up, uh, we'll see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching.